So, catch that. Welcome to EDUC 635, March 27th, in the middle of the big storm. All right, well, Yes, I guess I am. Okay. All right. Good evening. You made it. <laughs> Congratulations. It's just a little bit more of a push from this point. So, as I told Charles, you're clicking up on the roller coaster, which is very exciting. You're on the uphill side. And we've just got another week of working together with your project director then technical review, and then going into technical review, um, and then coming out of technical review, fewer corrections you have working with your project director right now, then the fewer you will have coming out of technical review. And you can be done and printed, etc. So, here we go. We are rolling tonight. I need your exact attention. I need you to follow me. As Jim always says, this is going to be a drink out of a fire hose. <laughs> a little tiny drink out of a fire hose. We have so much to move through tonight. Um, and project directors, actually, Maureen, um, let me do a little bit of um, uh, project director business. Um, we need to talk about the Title IX training. Scotty's already signed up and uh, remind me I can talk to Lynn should be here and we'll talk about that later. Um, then uh, what we're going to do tonight is we are going to complete your graduation paperwork. We are going to sign up for presentations based on your schedule and your project director's schedule. We are going to talk about walking in the ceremony for graduation in May, on May 18th, on a Saturday morning, um, up in Incline, if the snow has melted, I don't know. I don't know. We may be wearing our snowsuits. I don't know. Rather than caps and gowns. Anyway, we're going to talk about your poster. We will talk quickly about technical review and what that will look like. And the next thing is we will, the last, I should say, um, in conclusion of this class tonight, we will talk about your presentation, your defense, when you are standing in the front of the classroom, presenting your poster, presenting your professional project, and then you're done. So, first of all, the first thing that I want to do is begin to sign up for your presentation times. Now, this is how this works. You are going to discuss with your project director if you have already done that. And Brooke, I've talked with Christine okay. at length, so you and I will talk um, to meet her faculty schedule, etc. So, I put on the schedule at the bottom of the syllabus, I put May 6th to May 9th. Now, the 6th is a Monday, 7th, 8th, 9th is Thursday, Friday. And in my email, I also mentioned that if your project directors are available and it is convenient for you, we will do some Saturday morning also, depending on your schedules. But this is how we usually uh, conduct our presentations. I don't usually like to schedule them on a Monday, but if you are ready on a Monday, we can do it. And here's the deal. Your presentations, obviously, you need to be totally ready with everything printed, professionally printed. And if they're not professionally printed, you may need a little bit more time. If they come out of technical review and you have a lot of corrections to make, then you're going to need a lot more time before you have them professionally printed. And we'll get into the printing in just a little bit. But um, at this point, if you want to do Monday and you think you'll be ready and your project director agrees, we can do some on Monday. I start after school about 4 o'clock or as soon as you can make it up there. Each day we only do about 4 because for the panel, that's quite a bit. That's a lot. 
um, to have four back to back. Very challenging. Hi, Liz. Good to see you. Um, so, we work around your school schedules. The presentations are in incline. So you have to consider the fact that you will need to drive up there after school. But again, we can start them at 4.30. We can do them on Friday nights. We could maybe even do them on Saturday mornings, if that works for you. I will put this out here. First of all, you are doing something that you've never done before. This project has been challenging, we know that. And it is kind of the highlight at this point of your professional career until you get your doctorate. <laughs> that is the highest level of education at this point for you. So it is your choice. Some teachers take the afternoon off. Some teachers take the day off. I am not advocating for that. I am telling you about this option because when Jim and I were leaving for a really important vacation, ready to catch a flight, and you all know this, there was always that lost kid after school, right? <laughs> always. And then the police would come, and then you're watching your clock because you're worried about the kid, but you got to make your flight, and I don't want you to walk into your presentation frazzled. So consider your own personal professional responsibilities and of course uh, work with your project director about their ability to make a certain time period. So with that said, let's take a look very quickly at your syllabus. Very quickly. You are going to I'm on page 18 of the syllabus. You are going to have from tonight until April 8th to do the final round of back and forth with your project director to make corrections, to perfect it. And again, as I say, from tonight until April 8th, the more corrections, the better it is before it goes to technical review, the fewer corrections you will have when it comes out of technical review. Meaning that it won't take you much time to make those corrections and then you can get it approved and ready to print. So it goes in on Monday, April 8th at 5 o'clock here in the Reno office. Drop it off here in the Reno office. For my friends that are distant, you may email it and I print it because I'm the one that delivers it to um, the professional editors. Then, if you would, I, can, I know, they're over there. I know, it's all right. They're in room one. We kicked them out. We're bigger. Big guy wins, <laughs> in this case, in this case. Um, quite honestly, um, the more you do now, the better off you'll be at the end and less frustrated. So, in this office, April, Monday, April 8th at 5 o'clock p.m. It enters technical review at, on the 8th and it will come out before or on April 24th. During that time, you are going to work on your poster, which we'll discuss tonight. But, presentations then, this is April 24th now. Say your project was the last to come out on April 24th. Then, you've only got a week to make corrections and get it professionally printed. So, think about your project, project directors, think about your students and the pace of their work and decide if we're going to choose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what's your choice? Jason, you had a question. Well, I kind of, I think it's probably a dumb question, but no, as far, like just printing, just regular printed like this is fine for... No, 
tactical review? Oh, yes, yes. Just and we'll get, okay. Yes, and we'll get into that exactly. In fact, it doesn't have to be color, but some people, uh, when they print it for technical review, they like to print maybe the first few pages, especially the title page, in color so that the editors can kind of get a feel, a gist of what it looks like. Um, because, as you know, the color makes such a difference. It really does. And it really shows off the formatting of your project. So, all right. So I'm putting up here Monday, May 6th. And is, since we are an incline, is um, five, six, is starting at four o'clock too early? Not if we don't work that day. <laughs> that, that's your choice. You're absolutely, absolutely right, Nicole. Making that choice. And okay, you're making that choice. Okay. Would you? Well, because I have three, I'd like to do Wednesday if that's not going to interfere with anybody else. All right. So Monday. So holler if that's oh, bad for you. Wednesday is the only day that I do know that you care about the people. Well, I have it for Wednesday. 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 Wednes
<laughs> it's been so many communications. Can we ask her? Or is she? That would be great. 4.30 on Wednesday. Ask her 4.30 May 8th. Okay. Confirm that. Thank you so much. And Michael. They're uh, together they, right now. Okay, my, what? They're together right now. They Michael are together. Listen. That's perfect. Right They're meeting together in Prim Library <coughs> right now. So that's perfect. Um, anyone want to go at 5.30 on Wednesday? Are y'all holding out for Thursday? Is that the deal? <laughs> Lynn, what works for you? Well, we were talking Thursday. I can't get there too, too early. Right. Um, so, let's we'll see. So, so do my three. 5.30 Yeah, that's fine. Okay. 5.30 on Thursday. Okay. And then, can we do Danielle at 6 on Thursday? Oh, that's, that's five. five. Yeah, we're going to have to. But that's okay. It's a large class this year. Okay. So, we might have to. Get, I can come up twice if you want to see us. Okay, bless you. What's really important is our project, your project director needs to be on your panel, obviously. So the day that you present, your project director needs to be present as a panel member. Then uh, the other project directors, I try to coordinate so that we have at least three project directors to complete a panel. I can do Tuesday. Oftentimes we have four. And then I never know when Beth will jump in. <laughs> All right. Um, so Thursday, we'll start at what time? Can you do Monday? Monday would be better than Friday. Right, Monday. Well, what about Thursday, Erica? Oh, there's, there's two other. I mean, that would be so many. Unless I split up. We can do Friday. I mean, we can do Thursday. We'll just. Well, is Monday not good? Eat our spinach. Pardon? Is Monday not good? It, I'm totally yeah, open. Let's do these three on the I'm fine for my name. Are you guys Let's sure? Okay. Yeah, she just worries. She's going to be ready. She'll be so ready. ready. So ready. She's okay. Ready. So, what ready. time shall we start? You guys decide. Who's first and what time shall we start? I'll go first. All right, Ashley. Ooh, right, step out of the up, box. Ashley. Step up. Woo! She will be great. Uh, 435? 430. 430. Ashley, awesome. Huh. Start with the bang. All right. Ashley is at 430 on Monday, uh, May 6th, uh, 5 o'clock. Okay, Who's next? Okay. Erica? Sure. All right. Nicole? Yeah, Are you okay? Yeah. 5 o'clock is Erica. No, it's Nicole. Oh, doesn't Erica want five? Erica yeah, wanted five. Yeah, I'll take five thirty. Okay. <coughs> Erica, I'm blanking. You're okay. C. C. I, I totally blanked. Forgive me. Five thirty is Nicole. All righty. And Lynn, you want a Thursday? Am I correct? Um, yes. If Mickey could do at five thirty, and then I'll schedule Danielle for six. Perfect. Okay. okay. Awesome. Thank you. 5.30 on Thursday is um, Mickey. Mickey, I can never remember. Are you E-Y or Y? C-K-I-E. C-K. Wow, I was okay. totally off. <laughs> That's all right. You can put whatever. No, I won't. Like Just write whatever. Right? No, write no. whatever. Right? There's no, no other Mickey in here. No, no. You're too all right. special. <laughs> and Danielle. All righty. Okay, have we got everyone in this room for now? Meredith, I've got you. This is excellent. And then I can fill in with um, our distance students. All righty. Um, start easy, Joe. This looks great. Okay. Is she can burn? No. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. No. She did okay. say she had good ears. I can't believe it. I did what? <laughs> they said something really quietly, and I was like, no. <laughs> Behave good. Um, we don't have time for foolishness and shenanigans no today. Okay? No fun. Uh, of course you can. Okay. Of course you can. We all need to laugh. You've made it to this point. All right. So now I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you some paperwork. The top part is your graduation paperwork you. that you will fill out <laughs> and I'm going to meet with her to get her signature. Okay. Fill everything. The first copy 
Yeah, I'll grab that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
when they presented. You know, I watched that video. So it was like everybody in the room, and you come back in, and they went like so we can go in and talk about it. It's a little bit of a show. It's probably better than when you guys came. Or, I didn't care And you know what? Um, I will collect them very quickly. I will also collect, does everyone have your petition to graduate completed? Is that completed? Okay, if it's not, before you leave tonight, you must give it to me. Make certain that it is legible. Make certain that you have your name on that top line exactly how you want it to appear on your diploma. Okay? Most definitely. I will come around. Um, there are signatures that will be needed on uh, your petition to graduate. That is my signature, the administrator. You know what? Um, it goes on the back, so yes. Okay. But are you ready? If you want to wait, Brooke, that's fine. Oh, okay. And they have my own name. And you know what? Can you please give out some money? Exactly. I am. And so she's doing it in that case. I've already been here for four solid years. Okay. This is optional. Okay. This is optional. Exactly. The alumni contact information is optional. Okay. Let's um, let me collect. Thank you. I will sign. And yes. You know what? Just Okay. 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 Which is really cool. So, all right. I'm collecting. Thank you so much. And then I will. I'm going to put this aside. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank Okay. Now, I gave you a bunch of post-its. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Ashley. That would be from Ashley. Uh, I love it. Okay. 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 What we call um, a in progress, incomplete in progress. Now, do not panic over this. This is for the registrar's office. What happens is, in the next few weeks, I will be completing, and I've already started on some of you, an audit of all of your coursework. You are also advised to check your coursework throughout SNC because you cannot finish the program or graduate unless you have finished all the coursework. You have completed the coursework and passed successfully each class. So you know that, you're adults, you've been uh, tracking that, but yet it is now important, extremely important, that we confirm. I confirm, Nancy confirms, and I have to do an introduction to you in just a moment. Um, and then the registrar also confirms that you have met all requirements at SNC in order to finish the program and graduate. So this paper that says it's an incomplete, in-progress conversion form, what this means is the class 635 you will pass, but yet they put an incomplete into your grades as a placeholder until you have been um, audited appropriately, until it has been approved that your coursework is completely finished. With that, as soon as you see in SNC SIS, this is extremely important, 
as soon as you see an SNCSIS that you have a P for pass in your grade for 635, that means that they have completed the audit, audit and you can request your transcripts for that huge raise that you will get with the district. But that's the exciting part is when you see that P for passing, that means that you are good to go. Everything has been approved and you have completed all the requirements of Sierra Nevada College. So please complete this. Your student name, your ID number, and if you don't have your ID number, I will give it to you. The course number. Are you ready? Here we go. Course number, the subject is EDUC, uppercase. Like when you registered. EDUC. The course number is 635. The credits are three. The course title is Professional Project. Professional Project. The semester and year the course was taken is Spring 2019. So, as I said, you will see an I in SNCSIS for in progress. So, grade change from an incomplete, which you won't have an incomplete, or an in progress grade to a P. P is in Paul for passing. P, just put a P. Then, your instructor <coughs> needs to sign this. You do not sign this, but your project director will sign it. If your project director is not in attendance, then I can sign it. But I will take care of that uh, at a later date. I do Do you need your ID number? Who needs Who's their Cheryl, ID number? I do. Pardon? You sign it now. Please do. I want all signed paperwork so that I'm not um, having to run around collecting it from you. Cheryl, can Ashley have, or I'm sorry. Um, Ashley Porter? Alyssa was wondering if she can have 4 o'clock on Monday. Is that okay? Got it. Let's do that. I just wrote the date. Could you bring me Yes, it is. She wants to see Monday? Yeah. And okay. I just looked at the time by watch me. How thoughtful. Okay. So Alyssa is going here. And she says thank you. Oh, tell her thank you. Ask her if she got the paperwork at the library desk. Yes. Okay. I left paperwork there. Okay. okay. And your project director is signed? And you've completed? I don't know my ID. I don't know my oh, your ID numbers. Okay. Meredith, you are. Well, it's all 8,000. Oh, so that's all three, three, four, yeah. two, two, three, five, three, five, three, five, 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 do you need them? Jason, do you need your ID number? Excellent. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Great. Mickey, do you have yours? Yeah, I got mine. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. I will collect. Um, any more incomplete? Um, it's called incomplete, but you're not. It's just in progress. It's just a page place holder. Okay. We got it. We're good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Now let's talk about something really <laughs> delightful. Whether you're going to walk or not, that is your choice. We encourage you to walk in the graduation ceremony. Um, it's really lovely. It's um, the culmination of something you've worked so hard for. 
in terms of getting your BA or your BS and then you move on to graduate school. It's very exciting and it's a lovely celebration. As master's candidates, you go first. So, I'm not saying this, but <laughs> there's not that many undergrads, so you can either sit there and be polite or make a choice. I'm not saying it. <laughs> you didn't hear it from me. <laughs> but um, it is delightful um, to be a part of it, and it's quite a celebration. Please include your family, your friends, um, your parents, because as you all well know, um, they supported you through this. And it's a wonderful day to celebrate. So, with that said, I sent some information, and I sent more information, I think, today. I've sent so many emails, guys, sorry. <laughs> I think I sent more today from Anna Marie Jones. She runs the campus store, and she is the one that you will order via online your cap and gown, your tassel, and your hood. And because you are a master's candidate, you will wear a blue, it's lovely, a baby blue hood that uh, differentiates you from the undergrads. So you need to order that also. Um, and that is different from the master's package. If you have questions, email or call Anna Marie and she will help you with it. You do not need to go up to the campus to practice for um, the ceremony. Graduate students, you can just show up at 9 o'clock in the morning on the Incline campus and you go into TCES downstairs and just let them know. They'll know by um, your hood that you are wearing that you are a master's candidate, but um, and they will kind of line you up over here at 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, May 18th. Very exciting. And <laughs> um, and then, um, let's see, I made really explicit notes just because I knew that we were moving today, so I've got all of that. Any questions about graduation? It's $80, but you know what? Mine was a good investment because I'm still using it. So when you teach at the college level, you may have to use it. So, or we dressed up once for Halloween, remember? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> we did. We our, neighbor next door, yeah. our neighbor next door was getting her master's, so we all wore our, yeah, just, it was a crack up. Anyway, we all have a good sense of humor, so it was delightful. So you never know when you'll need it, right? Um, so it is quite an investment. Unfortunately, the undergrads are able to rent theirs. I guess they assume that graduates are more flush. We're starving <laughs> students also. I know. We're starving students also. So, um, with that said, any questions about graduation? We're good. Okay. You don't need to email me, although I want to know if you've made that decision. Send me a text or um, a delightful email and let me know so that I can look for you on that on that day, I'll be watching for you and cheering really loudly as you cross the stage. But questions, you need to email or call Anne Marie Jones at the campus store. Okay, then um, we did begin talking about technical review. So I'm going to jump back to technical review and I'm going to grab my syllabus. What's going to happen? Tonight, or maybe previously, uh, Meredith sent hers to me on Sunday. Your completed project goes to your project director in whatever format, usually hard copy, so that they can work off of it. From that point, um, from tonight, this point, until Sunday the 7th is when you have the opportunity for that final back and forth with your project director. There should be minimal, minimal corrections that your project director needs to make at this point in time. Then you will make, you will make a hard copy as a student of the final copy that is approved by your project director 
to go to technical review. Your project director says, Woo, hallelujah, Woo, you are done, turn it in, submit it to technical review. So on Monday, at some point in time, you need to get it over here to the office by 5 o'clock. And I will be picking it up. I'll be meeting with the professional editors and we go through all of them. If you have anything that you want to say, any questions you want to ask, put a sticky note on your project. Um, and I will tell you that um, first in is first out. So if you bring it on Monday at 4.59, your project will be the last one to be reviewed in technical review. If you bring it Friday, it might be the first because I take them in the order that they are submitted. So first in, first out. And our professional editors have been doing this for many years. They're very familiar with our projects. And if they ever have any questions, they always call me immediately. During technical review, we are on speed dial. I mean it. <laughs> Definitely. So, um, they are delightful young women with their own business in Reno. They usually, uh, most of their business is in uh, reviewing books for publication. So, hopefully, your project will someday be in publication. Um, most definitely. Then, during the technical review time, you are going to create the poster. You will create your electronic poster that will be, I'm putting one up on the screen for your example, we're going to go through that. Do not, do not start on your electronic poster this week. Focus on your project. That's your first priority. Get it done, get it perfect. And then once you submit it um, to technical review, you bring it by the office here, then start on your poster. This poster should take you approximately three, four, maybe five hours at the most. So do it in chunks. But from April 8th to April 24th, you are kind of free. <laughs> you have a little bit of a life yet, but don't get used to it because um, when it comes out of technical review, that will be your last push with your project director to make any corrections as stated by the professional editors. But know that, and we have done this often, we've gotten together, Scotty and I, Laureen, Lynn will be now, um, and we talk about possible corrections that were suggested. Some are mandatory, others are suggested. And if you or your project director can advocate for your correction and say, no, I don't want it to be like that, I don't want it changed, or they can, you can rationalize why it shouldn't be changed, then we'll go with it. And I'm not talking about changing your whole formatting. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about maybe some of your rewording um, for more professional language. That's what we're talking about um, with the professional editors. So with that said, you'll start. Your project is now in technical review. And now you may start on your poster. You are going to start with one PowerPoint slide. That's all you're going to use is one PowerPoint slide, or if you're in Mac, it's Keynote. Am I correct? Mac is Keynote. You are going to use a minimum of 18-point font, the size, because we want it to be red. You can see, you really can't see this, can you? So I've used this as an example for you to see that it's really difficult to read some of this because the font is too small. So you'll want your main titles to be bolded and in a larger font, and then your text will be consistent throughout. You want to choose a font that is readable. Nothing too cutesy, nothing too clever. 
because it needs to be readable and professional. You'll want to <coughs> definitely give us some visual appeal. Give us some color to this. And what most students do, um, I don't have her project, um, but this is um, Ursula and Ursula's project, first grade, so very cute. <laughs> Lots of um, circles, just delightful uh, polka dots. And her project also carried through the same colors and visual appeal. And in fact, Ursula, uh, Lorene was her project director, and I think she, <laughs> she gave birth the day after her presentation. We were working like crazy. <laughs> she was, there, she, like we, literally? We, literally, we, yeah, yeah, we literally. moved her up three days, because mm -hmm. the day she was to present was the day she was to have the baby. Right, and wow. she did. And she did. <laughs> and so, she we, passed a whole bunch of things that week. <laughs> she, yeah, it was, it was wonderful, but um, uh, an exceptional student. We were really pleased to have her. But um, notice that um, if you saw her project, it would coordinate. It would match if you want. That is your choice. But by using the same colors and coordinating, connecting your project to your poster, makes it a little bit easier for you in terms of having to think, oh, what am I, what am I going to put on here? What color am I going to use? So you want to be cautious of color. You don't want it to be so dark that the words can't be read. Some people choose a very dark background, and then they put it in the text in white print, and sometimes that doesn't work. My suggestion to you is to go see our good friend Paulette. <laughs> Give her a call. Talk to her on the phone. Send her your copy if you can't. Literally go into Rick's printing, and we'll talk about printing in just a moment. If you can't go into the printing, then send her a PDF copy and talk about it. And she'll talk to you about color. They are professional printers, so she knows about color. And she'll probably lecture you about color, too. <laughs> Molly, you've met Paulette, am I correct? I, I've been emailing her. Okay. <laughs> She is a hoot, truly a hoot, and she knows exactly what we want and what is required through SNC. They give us an excellent price um, on our printing, on our professional printing, but Paulette is just quite hilarious in that everyone in the office, if I walk into their printing um, place of business and I ask a question, oh no, oh no, only Paulette. They have been told hands off of SNC because she knows exactly what we want and she wants to support you and she knows that by the time you get to the printer, you're a little bit stressed, just a little bit. So um, she can give you some advice about your colors if you need it. So what will happen during your presentation is you will be, for example, up here, your poster will be projected behind you, and there will be a table of the panel with your project director and myself, and then possibly other project directors. So for example, on Monday, it would be Monday, May 6th for Alyssa, Michael will be on the panel, and Laureen will be on the panel, and I will be on the panel, and any other project directors that happen to um, Grace our, um, <laughs> our panelness. <laughs> anyway, um, and Beth, we never That's know when fun. she'll uh, come on in, which is delightful. So, in going to the poster, let's take a look at it. This is quite simple, because most of it comes from your proposal. Remember your 628 proposal that was approved, that you saved the very last copy? Well, pull it up because you are going to create now these text boxes. And I'd like you to turn to page, what did I do with it? Here it is. Turn to page 40, I believe, in the SNC handbook. 41, 40, and 41. In the SNC handbook, there are directions here on page 40 for your poster. There are specific requirements for your poster on page 41. This is the exact layout. You can manipulate it a bit, 
but these are the requirements, all the text boxes that have to be included in your electronic poster. So, I'm looking at page 41, and at the top, of course, is your title. Now, be really cautious because, and your project director has said this, and I've said this, your title appears in many places. And it's very possible that the professional editors or your project director or even you may change it when it comes out of technical review. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. But if you change it, make certain it matches on your poster, in your abstract. Your abstract on your poster and your abstract in your project. Make certain that they match. Then, in your project, there's three places that your title appears. Title page, bottom of the signature page, and your abstract in your citation. So check to make certain that all the titles are the same. This is one of the biggest mistakes. It's such a simple error. One of the biggest mistakes that most students make. So, um, make it stand out. This is your work. You should be proud of this. So, enlarge your title. The abstract is basically the abstract, copy and paste, from your project. The one that you created is going to fit in here. Don't forget a hanging indent. Don't forget that the title here is italicized. Unpublished Master's Professional Projects, Sierra Nevada College, Incline Village, Nevada. And space it so that it all fits. Don't put Sierra and then maybe Nevada College down here or Incline Village down here. Do your best. Keep it together. Simple, um, simple tips, but um, important for the visual appeal of your electronic poster. Then you're just going to copy and paste what your project page of abstract has. Put it in there. Then you go down to your project goals. Go back to your proposal. Your project goals, copy and paste from your proposal in 628. The exact project goals. For Ursula, the primary goal of this project is to develop a research base instructional guide of strategies and activities for first grade teachers to promote mathematical inquiry and problem solving. And then the secondary goal. And notice how she spaced between them. She didn't run them all together like one large paragraph. Please do your best to look at your poster, think about visual appeal, but also think about spacing and how it, um, how it presents itself so that it's not so crowded. The next um, text box will be your professional questions and rationale. That's the exact title that you will use. And in this case, you will look at your proposal again, and you will copy and paste. Here's your first question. Here's your second question. But on this poster, this is the only place that you really have to think. You have to answer that question. So you are going to create one paragraph to answer your question. Now it's embedded somewhere in your rationale of your proposal, most likely. The answer to this first professional question. I recommend that you center your question and then either use an indentation, a paragraph indentation, or just left alignment. Whatever your choice is, but it separates, it differentiates the questions from the text box. Then, and Ursula preferred to bold, not just the title, but her questions to make them kind of pop too. This is kind of the fun part. You can be a little bit more creative with this. So she says, what effective research-based strategies and activities can teachers use to promote math enrichment and problem-solving opportunities in the first grade classroom? So really think, 
What is she asking? She wants to know what effective research-based strategies and activities. So when you answer your question, make certain that the answer is answering the question. Teachers are more likely to detect mathematically promising or gifted students in the first grade classroom if these children are afforded the opportunity to demonstrate their abilities through challenging math tasks. Here she goes. She's talking about the strategies and the activities. And then she uses two citations. You need to use citations from your proposal, which comes from your 12 annotations, from your annotated bid. If you notice back on page 41 of the SNC handbook, it states, professional questions and rationale. Professional question one, the centered. The rationale answers the first question. Professional question two, centered answers the second question. Each question must contain one to two citations from your references, not from an excellent book, Fountas and Pinnell on reading strategies that you used in your project. The citations have to come from your proposal, from your annotations. So you're finding the best stuff to answer your two professional questions and the rationale. You're rationalizing. Then, moving down to the references, I want you to choose two, maybe three, and it's all depending on the space that you have on your poster. Two references minimum that really impacted your project. When you did your research, what two references really made the biggest difference in the direction of your project? What influenced you the most? What impacted you? And then here you are going to send, or excuse me, you are going to uh, type it up in a hanging indent. Actually, all you need to do is take it off the top of your annotation and embed it in your reference section. Ashley. Yeah, so um, your the references in the bottom don't have to be the same as your citations in the professional questions and rationale. Yeah. Oh, good question. Good question. I hadn't gotten there. Great question. Stand up, Ashley. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is extremely important. If these references are that important, if they influenced you the most, if they were so impactive of your project, then they probably should be up here somewhere. Or they should be over here somewhere. So look at what you used in your abstract. Excuse me. Look at what you used in your professional questions and rationale. And we should see them down here. Okay. At least one. Okay. At least one. So, because what I'm seeing up there is that she has like Ramirez et al., Morisano and Shore, but then down there it's like Geist and Gavin. And so, here's Gavin. Yeah, and there's Geist. So it, it shouldn't be encompassing basically everything that you put on your poster. It's just like your two favorites. Your two favorites, okay. but if they influenced you the most, then That's surely they hear up here. Yeah. And I will tell you, I never know when Beth will show up. Um, and I invite her, of course. Um, she's often on our panels. But what we, as a panel, and what she wants to hear the most is your research. That's what this is about. So she wants to hear how your research impacted your project. So, and we'll get to that when we talk about presentation. Um, by mentioning your research, um, can maybe win you points. <laughs> Most definitely. But, as I said, in here, these need to appear somewhere in here. Because you're calling them your most influential research. Okay. So, prove it. Then, going to your standards. You're going to have three standards, three sections. Your standards over here. <coughs> and know that you can change these in the order, but... 
this is the typical order <coughs> of presentation when you talk about your poster. And it may be all about your space on your poster. Then, in standards, for example, the first one will be your professional organization. Remember back to 628, you did a PowerPoint on that? PowerPoint presentation, here it is. The National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. Well, obviously, this is a math project for first grade students. She included two standards for her, pro, or for her poster. The second set of standards will be the in-task. No exceptions. It's the in-task. And you're going to pull it right off of your proposal. Now think about, she has in-task, and she says, Standard 3, Learning Environments, and Standard 8, Instructional Strategies. If your project kind of morphed in a different direction than you had intended with your proposal, you may only use one of these. But what you're doing is you are choosing, again, like we did in 628 for our proposal, the most overarching standards. You're not going to be putting in every specific standard for phonics or diagraphs or diphthongs or blends. You're only going to put in phonics, delivery of instructions, something like that. You're going for the big picture again not the little picture. So, the first, the top standard, is your professional organization. The second standard is in task. And the third standard will be your Nevada content standards. Those will be what are listed in your lesson plans. Probably not what's on your proposal, but maybe, maybe they will. It's your decision. But again, it's the standards that are most applicable, far-reaching, to your project. Nicole. Those look super short. It looks like eight words. My, my standards are huge. Do you want to paraphrase or the whole thing? You cannot paraphrase them. Good point. The whole thing. Okay. The whole thing. So then you standards. may only have... Like really big. I know. And some of them are. So you may only have room for one. Okay. Um, so, yes, hers are really, really small. It's first grade. Well, so math practices, not. too, are the kind of all-encompassing math ones, so those ones are a little shorter. Mm -hmm. Like, mine's five lines long. Five, five lines. Five one of them. Mm -hmm. SEL is very prevalent now, so SEL will be in there for many of you, which right. is relatively new. If, if that is included in your lesson uh, plans, if each lesson has possibly an SEO. And if that is the most encompassing um, standard that speaks to your project. Then don't forget, so many students do this, don't forget to put your name on the poster. So many students have done this. I've gone through our shelves in TCS to organize some projects and say, oh, this is such a great project or poster and there's no name on it. And up here, when you cite yourself, this is exciting. You're citing yourself in your abstract. Up here, I had a couple that said like Smith J. Well, I couldn't tell who Smith J was. We can kind of tell UK Irvine, her name was Ursula Irvine. That gave me a little bit more of a clue. But somewhere, either in the middle, on the bottom, maybe at the top. Give us your name. And if you look on page 41, you will include three identification areas. First is your name, and don't forget, she has Ursula K. Irvine. Up here she cited Irvine, comma, UK. So your name has to match on your title page and in your abstract and on your poster. Make certain if you choose to use a middle initial, great, use it. Just don't forget to include it uh, on your poster. The second line will say Sierra Nevada College. The third line 
will say spring 2019. Spring 2019. And up here in your abstract, it will say 2019 in parentheses. Because that's when you are completing your project. Mm -hmm. Not when you started in 628, but when you completed. No, so, think about, your first and middle initial. I have a few more, think about, um, some posters are very, very classic and simple, and that's your choice. If that's what your project looks like, then we definitely want that. Um, or... Let me see. Oh, here's another one, a primary one. Uh, this is Denise's, actually another one of Scotty's. No, that's mine. That's, yeah. No, Scott, no, Laureen, sorry. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, <laughs> you, yeah, yeah, well. Yes, thank you. It was very good. Oh, why is this not right? Okay. Anyway. We've got more polka dots. Obviously, <laughs> that semester everyone was into polka dots. Um, we also have, let's see, um, uh, let me go into another somewhat primary but more on PBIS for second grade teachers. Then, Here is a middle school math. That's cool. And okay. here is this was um, our student Katie Wolliford. Katie was let me see if I can make that bigger. Why is this not opening? Go to the left two more times. What should I do? Go up. Right, no, to the right, like an inch. There, Wait, go, go, left. The left, plus. left, left. That one? Left, no, left. The circle left. One plus. more time. Down. That one. There, there we go. Um, maybe we'll try this. No. No. Thank you, Nicole. Sorry. Usually, <laughs> no. Look at it. Usually, um, I apologize. Usually, um, it's... I think it's because they're PDFs and not yes, um, PowerPoint. Exactly. And so I can't, let me see if view, will, oh wait, full screen. There we go. Yay. Thank you. Found it. So Katie was um, and is one of our graduates. Uh, she was a fascinating um, student to work with. I was her project director. She works for Microsoft. Obviously she'll never teach. She's going to work for Microsoft. But within her company, she does professional developments. She does training. So having a master's um, in education was a benefit in her company. And so she was very, shall we say, left brain, very concise, very organized. And um, so her project, it's hard to see, but it's all gray and uh, white. And, just very uh, simple. And so um, it can be classic, simple, or here's my favorite. All the project directors laugh about this one. Or this is about my student, Will Davenport, who is a teacher in, um, where's my, here's my view, so in South Lake Tahoe. Why is this not? He's an English teacher in South Lake Tahoe. And comics in the classroom. Well, Will um, didn't read until he was almost in sixth grade. And he learned to read because of his passion for comic books. He did a fascinating project with comics in the classroom. They were actually graphic novels that were supplementary to his English language arts instruction in the ninth grade. So high interest, low level readers. And he, uh, his project was amazing in that there was 
so much in the background, but it was all about the comic book heroes or the superheroes. And his research, I think I might have mentioned in 628, he had a um, research article, an annotation from 1942. And I approved it because it was so applicable to the history of the emergence of Superman and basically superheroes, which followed our society and the norms. And you can see that superheroes again right now in this time, um, time frame of our um, century are prevalent in movies, comic books, um, and this was Will's passion, the comic books. He was quite a collector also, but with that said, whew, it's busy. <laughs> but that's your choice. Again, it's your choice. And so you can see, in order to make it um, all fit, his text boxes, he kind of played with them. And that's your choice. As long as when you present, you are organized in your presentation. You will make one PowerPoint slide, keynote, um, that's your choice. And then when you go in to the PowerPoint, um, you are going to insert um, and customize the size of your slide. Your poster is going to be your poster is going to be a 17 by 11 inch and this is all on page 40 and 41 but when you go in you're going to customize your slide so that it is a little bit of a border instead of 17 wide you'll make it 16 instead of making it 11 you'll make it 10 and a half so that you don't have overflow onto your borders. So you're customizing. Laureen? I have 16 and a half, not 16. Did that... I say, I thought I said 16 and a half. Okay. 17 and 11. I'm sorry. So uh, that's your poster. The slide is 10 and a half by 16 and a half. Right. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> I, okay. Yes, thank you. No for catching me. We're rolling, so I want to be totally accurate. Um, so, and Paula will lecture you because you didn't leave enough of a border and it may bleed over. So, this is what it's going to look like. When you come to presentation, you will have, and this is exactly what the printing shop knows, you will have two professional projects. Two. Two binders. They'll look like this. Two professional projects. You will have four of these. These are a dollar at Rick's Printing. You'll have four of these because the panel in front of you will have both of your books for them to review and each panel member will have a poster. Then you'll also have your proposal. You will need to make a copy. Do not forget this. Do not staple it, just put a paper clip on it, on a cheap piece of paper, black and white. Do not pay to have it professionally printed. It's not that important. Do you hear me, type A? Okay. <laughs> Do not have it professionally printed. It's not necessary, guys. The it's entire right. thing with, the, with the, all of it. All of it, okay. like 30 pages, yep. whatever okay. it turned out to be. So you're going to have your first three pages of your proposal, and then you'll have all of your annotated bits. And it's in the project, too, as well. Okay. It's in the project, but we have it separated because we have a repository that SNC is required to keep. And so your proposal and your project need to be um, one copy. When you leave, you'll get a few copies, two or three, of your poster, and SNC will keep one copy of your project and a copy or two of your posters. So... When you come to presentation, you'll have two professionally bound projects, four electronic posters printed out. You'll have your 
proposal, and most important, you will bring your poster on a jump drive so that when you come in, we can just pop it in and project it. And I'll mention this in when we talk about presentation, but if you want, you can send it to me that day also, just to be safe. Just to be safe, because we don't want any problems, all right? So, this is um, questions on the poster. Does anybody have questions on the poster? Laureen. <laughs> Once I review the posters, oh, my you. lovely ladies, I, they send them to you for That's final right. approval. Hmm. Thank you so much for reminding me. The final step. This poster needs to be done during technical review. When your project is in technical review, you need to do this poster because you know what happens if you don't do the poster and you start enjoying the freedom from not working on your project, this is what happens. Your project comes out of technical review. You've got to create a poster. You've got to make all the corrections to your project. You've got to get it into printing. And you are too stressed, and we do not want that. So the time to work on your poster is when your project goes into technical review. Now, you and your project director will work on the poster, as Lorraine brought up. You will create it, send it to your project director, and again, you're kind of doing some back and forth. The final approval on the poster goes through me. So you send your poster when it is approved by your project director to me. I don't want to see it before. I want to see it when your project director says, yes, you may send it to Cheryl. And then I approve it. I read it, I approve it, and I may get you on the phone and say, mm, let's, you forgot this word, or you forgot the hanging indent in your abstract, whatever. We want as many eyes on your poster and on your project so it's as perfect as possible. Is there a certain date you need to buy? No. Okay. But don't wait till the last no. minute because then I have 15, literally. And it's <coughs> difficult. I can't give you the time that you deserve. So get started on it. Okay. okay. Yes. Ashley? No, I'm good. Okay, good. All right. We are good. Okay, poster, we're good, correct? Any questions on the poster? <sighs> okay, look at your next handout, please. Which is um, your next one, thank you, <laughs> is the, pre thank you, Mickey, may I use it? Yes. Here's the presentation. We're going to talk about presentation. And you know what? I brought, Nikki, thank you. I brought a couple of um, commencement brochures. I'm going to pass them around. This is from last year, and it's kind of exciting. This is the reason I've asked you to complete your graduation paperwork is so I can submit it early to make certain whether you walk or not, you'll still be listed in the um, commencement brochure. It's pretty special. All right, let's take a look at the presentation. And grab my. Okay, this presentation handout, if you lose this hard copy, is also part of the PowerPoint that I sent at the last class meeting of 628 and the first class meeting of 635. This is your Bible. Pardon? Your Bible. <laughs> it is. This is it. And it is your, as we call it, 15 minutes of fame. You will have a half an hour scheduled. But this is what your presentation will look like. You will present to the committee and any audience members that you want to invite. You are welcome to invite 
family members and maybe your principal, maybe your department, some, your peers at your school, any personal friends, you are welcome to have anyone you want in the audience if you feel comfortable with that. Some of you may not. This is truly the, the most important, I think, in your professional career, but yet can be very nervous also. And if you are not comfortable as a public speaker, that is your choice if you want family and friends there to support you. But we encourage you um, to bring them. You will have your poster, you'll have your two bound projects, you will have the four copies of your electronic poster. You will have your proposal. I will have all of your graduation paperwork so you don't have to worry about it. There is graduation paperwork that begins on page 48 in the SNC handbook. You don't even need to look at it, but I've already copied it, had you fill it out, we're done. So you don't need to bring that when you present. You'll have 15 minutes to present your project, and we will discuss this in just a moment. Then, when you have completed your uh, presentation, the audience will leave, you will pull up a chair, and the panel will grill you. <laughs> we will ask you questions about your project. Please do not be nervous about this, because you know your project so well. But there could be questions about this is a wonderful project, but it seems to be geared toward the higher level learner. How could you differentiate it? How could you accommodate SPED students, students who are struggling um, with uh, grief issues or trauma or second language learners? So these are some of the questions that could be asked, and you'll be able to answer them. There might be some questions about you personally in your school and how you might implement this into your school. Maybe we need a little bit more information from you. Maybe it wasn't covered in the presentation. There's lots of um, questions that relate to your project that might be uh, asked of you, but yet you know your project so well. So please do not stress about this. So the panel will talk with you for about five minutes, then you will leave then the panel will talk about you, and then we'll invite you back in and hopefully congratulate you. And trust me, if you've gotten this far, unless you totally blow your presentation, then you will pass. And here's what happened once. My project directors have heard this before. A young man came in, ready to present, if you will look at the first set of bullets here, the third bullet says dress professionally. You are defending your Master of Arts in Teaching project. We will be dressed professionally. We expect you to be dressed professionally. Think about that outfit in the closet that you haven't worn for a while. See if it fits. <laughs> and then <laughs> decide if you want to wear it. Gentlemen, I highly recommend an iron shirt, a tie, a suit, sport coat, your choice. But we want to see a professional dress. I had a young man walk in. We were setting up. I said, good afternoon. We're excited to have you present. I said, did you leave your clothes in the car? He said, no, this is me. He was wearing shorts, flip-flops, a t-shirt, and a vest. I said, let me get out my calendar because we will be rescheduling your presentation. This is not appropriate. Not appropriate. I was so disappointed in him. That is so disrespectful to himself, who has worked so hard on this project, to me, to the panel, to his project director, to the school, to the whole master system. Um, so anyway, he was kind of shocked. <laughs> and I said, see ya. So please consider that. All right, enough of the lecture. Let's look at the uh, presentation. If you follow this, as Lorene said, this is it. This is the guide. If you put this organizational set of bullet points 
in your brain as you practice your presentation, you cannot go wrong. And we know you will be nervous. We are nervous, especially your project directors. We are like your parents. We are dying for you, truly. And we want you so, so much to succeed that it's a room full of nervous people. And those that are with you are also cheerleading you, but nervous also. So we understand this. We expect this. Please know that. The first thing, you will have approximately two minutes, just about two minutes, to introduce yourself. You've got everything set up. I will tell you when to begin. We will start a timer. You are responsible for having a timer. So, either bring one friend. Nicole, you said that Alyssa is going to stay for you. If you were able to be early, you could time Alyssa for 15 minutes, and then she could time you. This happens quite often. If you are uncomfortable about bringing in family members or your audience's support, then choose one of your peers, one of your cohorts here in 635 to time you. The panel cannot time you. But if you've practiced your presentation, you've kind of got it. You know. Um, so connect the project. Introduce yourself and tell us where you're teaching or what you're doing currently. Molly. Just curious, are there going to be 628 students at these presentations because we got to attend the one last year? Thank you, Molly. I hadn't gotten that, but let's okay. start off that way. No, with the audience. Perfect. The 628 students, who some of you may know and could be your timers, are expected, it's part of their requirement, to attend one of these nights, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I will tell you that Thursday is our normal 628 meeting night in Incline, and so they'll probably attend Thursday. But they have any one of the nights to attend one set of presentations. Thank you, Molly, for reminding me of that. So, first thing, introduce yourself. Take about two minutes. Connect the project to yourself. Why did you do this project? Give us a couple of sentences about why you chose this project. Did it come out of your childhood? Did it come out of your classroom? Then, dress professionally already discussed. So it, give yourself about two minutes to give us some background on you and on the project. How did it evolve? Ashley. Do I need to make sure my tattoos are covered? No, you do not. Okay. Thank you. That is your choice. Discuss the electronic poster. Now, you've introduced yourself. Now you're going to turn to the poster that is projected behind you on the screen. And this will give you a moment to kind of catch your breath. You can, don't forget, a cup or a bottle of water. And as you turn, you can, if you so choose, if you get really dry, turn, I'd like to introduce and discuss my poster. <laughs> it's called Comics in the Classroom, and give us the title. Then you're going to go through the poster. And you'll begin with the abstract, or possibly your project goals. I wouldn't jump into the professional questions right away. I would track on page 41 of the SNC handbook. It talks about the layout of your poster. And if yours is pretty similar to this, then just go left to right. Discuss your poster. And in fact, Wills is very, very creative, so I'm going to bring up, come on, hello, wake up. I think it's already exited out. Did it? But it's not? I'll try it over here. There we go. Okay, um, let's see. Let's go back. That's too small. Um, you can see how... Is Megan in there? Megan. Oh, yes, I do have Megan's. Um, right?
right here. And I'll make a view. Is that part? Um, our student, Megan, uh, was a Forest Service Ranger. Would never teach, but in South Lake Tahoe, she works for the National Forest Service. So, uh, Lorene had a challenge, but did an excellent job of bringing her project so that it was, again, like Katie's from Microsoft, so that it was compatible with not only our standards in the Nevada Department of Ed, but would be useful and benefit for her uh, as she taught um, classrooms out in the field um, as a Forest Service Ranger. So, introduce the, uh, the title, go to your abstract, you are not going to read any of this poster. You are going to paraphrase it. There's a couple of areas that you may be able to read, but you are going to say, in my abstract, and then discuss. Many children are experiencing limited encounters with nature. Researchers have recognized the value in outdoor education. You're not going to read it, but you're just going to talk about how research shows that many children do not experience outdoor education um, experiences, encounters, environments, and the value of it. Just give us a quick overview. Do not read it. If you read it, you'll run out of time. You will become frustrated. You will become quite nervous. So, overview your abstract. Then talk about your project goals. You may read your project goals. So turn to your poster. My first project goal. The primary goal of this project is to provide a research-based resource model guide for elementary educators to adapt and include environmental education in school curricula. My secondary project goal, and then you can go back, because we don't want you to mess it up. And we don't want you to paraphrase. You have to cite it exactly as written. Then your secondary project goal. Then go to your professional questions or go to your standards, whatever order your um, poster is in, just so you don't skip anything. Do Mickey. we have like note cards? No. Okay. Good question. No note cards. Okay. Nope. I was going to ask that. This is your project. You've slaved over it. You've researched it. You know it well. You don't need note cards. But you can create a bullet list, an outline that's up here okay. when I you practice. Okay, I wondering for like, I don't have to read it off the board. I think that's okay. No. No worries. You should, Mickey. Okay. Because that gives you a moment to ah, kind of regroup and okay. collect yourself, if you choose. And sometimes, it's amazing, some of our students know it so well that they can verbatim uh, recite it almost. But do not try to memorize anything. We've had students try to do that, and then they lose where they are, and oh, bless their hearts. <sighs> they get so nervous, and they stop, and they pause, and they can't remember. And So do not memorize either. No note cards, do not memorize. You may not read the abstract, paraphrase. You may read the project goals. If you go to your professional questions and rationale, my first question is, you may read the question, only the questions, and then paraphrase the answer. How can elementary educators collaborate with environmental educators to provide meaningful, outdoor, accessible environmental education in existing school curricula. So, um, actually, it was delightful. Megan worked in Jim's district in Lake Tahoe Unified School District. And their kiddos were so fortunate to be able to work with the Forest Service right there around the corner from the schools and go out into the fields. Um, then go to your second question. Don't forget, the panel wants to hear about your research. So, Berndt and Franklin, 2014, suggested that. Um, I was greatly influenced by Berndt and Franklin's uh, research in 2014. And oh, look, here's Berndt 
and Franklin down here. So don't forget uh, one or two citations to support your professional questions and rationale. Then move to your standards. The first one will be your professional organization from your proposal. The second one will be the INTAS standards. And the third will be your content standards. This is about science, so she used the Next Generation Science Standards, the NGSS. You may read your standards. You may read your standards because, Ashley, as I mentioned, they are verbatim. They are word for word. So we don't want you paraphrasing your standards. So you may read the standards. Then go to your references. Do not forget to talk about your references. This is the most important thing. And so many students are kind of done and nervous, so they fail to include the references. And this is, in fact, almost the most important thing because we want to hear from you how important your research was. She chose three. Oh, most important. Notice, you can't see, but they are cited Berndt, Blatt, and Ferreira in alphabetical order by the first author. When you list them here, put them in alphabetical order by the first author. Now, it's been about six minutes. You've taken two minutes to introduce yourself. You've taken six minutes, seven maybe at the most, to introduce and discuss your poster. Now, pick up your project. I'd like to discuss my project. We may have it on the table, so just move over, pick it up off the table. I may hand it to you, your project director, someone on the panel may hand it to you. And then, if you notice, tabs. Do not forget to tab the most important areas that you want to discuss. For example, she has the table of contents. Here's her table of contents. This is how my project is organized. You don't, <clears throat> you don't need to tell us about the title page, the signature page, <laughs> the abstract. You don't need to do that. But they better be in order in your project when it goes to technical review. But you might want to mention, for example, Corrine said that she included a PBIS overview. So she gave some information before the project rolled out about PBIS. What was PBIS? And then she organized it so that she has PBIS strategies, PBIS lessons. She did a professional develop initially, professional development initially, and then she went into some lessons that would be delivered via uh, the teacher who was engaged in the professional development. So then she went to give us I'm now on the present professional project on the presentation page. Walk your audience through the resource guide or your manual, whatever you call it. She went to one lesson. Pick one lesson, one of your best or one that you feel truly introduces your project as kind of an overview and discuss it. You may have about a minute or so to discuss it. Then she um, went on to discuss another, um, another lesson, and then she talked about her standards matrix. And then my project concludes with the annotated bibliography of my research that supports my project. Then you put it down, and how will your project make a difference? This is what it asks. Talk to us about how will it make a difference? How will it be utilized? Please don't let it sit on the shelf and collect dust. How will it be utilized? If you've already discussed it with your peers, your project, your, excuse me, your um, team, your department at your school, then please let us know that. Let us know that. My school really needs this. My school really needs PBIS, so I've already presented it to my principal and discussed it with my peers. 
even in the lunchroom, but at staff meetings. Um, then, <clears throat> as I said, you give an activity, but in closure, we want you to tell us the impact on teaching. Well, PBIS, because so many students need intervention in behavioral um, issues these days, so hopefully PBIS will be effective. So give us an overview um, on how it will impact. So your very last discussion presentation to us will be how it impacts. How will your project impact teaching? Now you're about six minutes, five minutes. So you've had two minutes. You've had mm, five, six on your poster, five or six on your project, making up 15 minutes of fame. And the most important thing is, when you are done, and I'll probably be staring at you, and I'll go, and you will say, oh, thank you. Say thank you so that we know that you are done. Thank you. All righty, that's so important. And then you can take a breath. And then we will ask the audience to leave, and you will pull up a chair, and we'll discuss your project and ask you questions. Okay, you're not asleep yet, but almost. Hang in there. <laughs> I really appreciate um, your attention. Are there any questions? Not bad. Not bad. Any que not bad. <laughs> we had a lot to cover tonight. Any questions? Let me check my list. Questions? We can read references verbatim. Yes, okay. you can. You don't have to read the whole thing, but um, give us the title. Like the title, not their names, but. You could. You yeah. could say, okay. Baird and Franklin um, produced a, a review of research on school field trips and their value in education. This was from the International Journal of Environmental and Science Education. Okay. Something like that. So, paraphrase. Paraphrase. We can read the question. Read the question. Oh, excuse me, wait, wait, wait. Read the question. I was in See, it's out of order. So I got messed up. Read the question, paraphrase. Read the question, paraphrase. If you, if you can't see this, and I know space was an issue, but I'm going to hold this up. This is the end right here of her question. I would have spaced so that this is more legible, more readable. So think about this when you are creating your poster. Okay. Okay, Laureen. And if it's out of order, which it's really not out of order, you can have any order you want. Right. Point being though, we've had a student or two who in their haste to get done has forgotten an entire section. Right. Please keep track of what you're doing and make sure you cover the whole poster. And look on page 41. Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong. It's all there for you. And sure, I'll make sure that everyone practices. Oh, Scotty, thank you. The most important things. In front of the mirror. Practice in front of the mirror. Practice in front of your dog. Practice in front of any family member that you feel comfortable. Practice, practice, practice. That's the most important thing. Because then you will feel comfortable in your presentation. Very, very important. Okay. Okay, let me check my list again. Let's see if I've got everything. All righty. Did you want to give out works printing info? Ah! That's the last thing. Scotty, thank you so much. The last two pages of the handouts. Thank you. And Scotty doesn't even have the handouts in front of me. Rick's printing. Professional printing. Here's kind of a cheat sheet. I gave this to you, I think, in the second class. But I've given it to you again. Their prices are 30 cents per color page. And again, the posters, a full color poster is only a dollar each. I am not telling you that you need to go to Rick's. I'm giving you a suggestion. But it would be to your benefit. A, you'll save money. B, they know what they're doing. And C, they'll get it done. 
correctly, and it will be beautiful. And Paulette literally goes page by page, and if she doesn't like a page, she has it reprinted. You may go to Office Depot, you may go to FedEx, Kinko's, Staples, wherever you want to go, but you will pay more and it will take them longer. You may be down to the wire. And Paulette, even though it says she needs two days for printing, she may be able to do it in an afternoon. Call her first. It depends on their other work. They are, um, they do blueprints and printing for um, architecture, construction, and engineering companies and contractors. So um, if they're not too busy, she can make it happen for you quickly. Do not expect that. But as I said, it's almost nice to pre-run um, a conversation with Paulette, either electronically on the phone or going in person and talk to her. And it should cost you, depending on how, um, how many pages you have, and depending on if you go back to back, which is your choice, you can either print one-sided, or I think I've got a sample here. Right. Or you can go, let that fall, or you can go back to back. So that, let me find the beginning of this lesson. So here's the very first pages of Natalie's project. Very simple, very classic. It can be opened on a teacher's desk for reading. It's your choice, and you can discuss that with Paulette. But um, around $40 each, you may be able to get out of there between $80 and $100. One student had a really thick project back in the day when we didn't put a limit on pages, and hers was like $130. But if you go to Staples, Office Depot, you'll have some nice young person who works at the counter, has no idea, they just accept it from you, and it may take two or three days to print, and we've had many students that have paid up to and over $200. Kinko's is 49 cents a page for color. How much? 49 cents. Versus 30. Thank you. And who did you say that was, Nicole? Uh, Kinko's. Kinko. And he even said on the phone, he goes, we're the worst. Don't go through us. Oh! And I have called. I've called Kinko's and FedEx and uh, Office Depot and said, I've got some starving students. Can you give us a good price? They give us a good price, but yet they still don't beat Rick's. Yeah. When you travel to Rick's, get off the freeway at Mill Street, either coming south or north, off the freeway at Mill Street, go west to Kitsky, turn right. As you get off the freeway, get in that immediate right lane so you can turn right onto Kitsky. And they are on the right-hand side. There's like a used car dealership on the corner. And then there's a store, it's a sporting goods store called Mark Four and Strike. And up on the top, do you know where it is, Charles? Mm -hmm. It has a giant um, bullseye, literally, with, I think it's an elk or something, literally stuffed um, up on top of the bullseye. So you can't miss it. You turn into that parking lot and Rick's is right next door. Very easy to get to. They are open from 7.30 to 5.30 in the evening, Monday through Friday. So when I say Monday, those of you that are presenting on Monday, um, you want to be certain that you get in there before the weekend. <coughs> they are open on Saturday, like till 1, I think. But check with that because... Um, but they don't print on that day. So you could pick up, but you can't take it in to have it printed on a Saturday. You'll have to wait till the weekend. And I made a note, Paulette is so, here it is, Paulette, so cute. She called me in a panic. She said, when are your students 
going to be bringing in their projects because I'm going on vacation. I said, no, Paula, you can't do this. She's not, she'll be fine. Her vacation is uh, April 4th in the 5th. So next week, we're fine. We don't even need her then. So she'll be there. She may be there on a Saturday because they do take turns uh, working on Saturdays, but um, my suggestion that you use Rick's printing, if you so choose. And 49 cents, wow, that's a lot. That's a lot. And oftentimes, even using Office Depot, some of our students haven't been that pleased. I had one come in in tears. And so it was, I was almost in tears. And so disappointing. Jason. I was just going to suggest, I actually met Paulette. She did, my students, we did this thing for a story stroll, and oh. she printed something for us. But it's a good idea to call to make sure that, because like the first time I went in there, she wasn't there, and, and she's the only one who does like the small batch stuff. So I, and I needed to speak with her. So right. I had to come back. So it's good just to call ahead of time. And make certain, she does. She gets in, she's a real early bird. So sometimes she comes in at 6, and so she may leave at 4, 4.30. Now, the shop is still open till 5.30, but she does often leave, I think, around 4-ish or so. Give her a call. And she's been known to wait for you also. Anyway. Okay. What else? Project directors. What else have I forgotten? Anything? Here's my list. Okay. We're good. I think we're good. Here's my list. Okay. Oh, I have a <laughs> Laureen. We have a question about um, citing videos and that sort of thing. Is it in the full site, in background, or in materials, or both? So please preview video um, up with the site. Is that in the, the background? Or Not the note to teacher. Oh, oh, I'm oh sorry. it's in material. Okay, got Just it. It's a minute. lesson plan. I'm, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going through the project. <laughs> trying to pass. Okay. Yeah, um, I had emailed you about this, and I unfortunately. And you didn't hear back. I didn't hear back. I'm having a real problem. It's okay. So basically, with my emails. I didn't know like if I'm supposed to tell the person to queue it up in the background information using the link, or to write the link in my materials. Put it in. Go ahead, Mom. Karen, how do you do both? Yeah. Well, we've done both as well, but some of those yeah, they're are just so long. long, and it looks a little funky. In and it does look funky, doesn't it? Mm. Well, if they're particularly if you're asking the the teacher to copy this and copy this and copy cut laminate, it's just a lot. So you you really sent me an email? I did. Really, just I still love you. Oh, good. I'm so <laughs> glad because I still love you, oh. and it's not that. Oh my gosh, I spend. Uh, Jim can testify to this. I spend hours, and then someone will say, you never returned my email. I go, oh, I didn't get it. And I'm, these days, I'm checking my spam, my junk, totally. my deleted, everything. Yeah, no just, worries. <laughs> so I just want to do it right. <laughs> exactly. So, so, if it were separate, so if you were doing um, an introductory in the, in the background in your lesson, right, and you did, um, this lesson is important because if you separated view this video, and then down here with another separation, almost like a paragraph, then you could list the things that need to happen before the lesson. Would it be okay then just in materials to list the video without the link? So it would be in full, full... It'd be in the background. Mm -hmm. It'd yeah. be somewhere. Okay. Whatever looks best. Okay. Either in your materials, in your background information, or in the lesson. Okay, so if I'm the teacher... Ooh, but you had mentioned that you didn't want it appearing in the lesson if it wasn't mentioned in the material or background. Well, it'd be mentioned in the materials, but not the whole link. Gotcha. Okay. I'm gotcha. saying, okay. right. Okay. You definitely, because that's part of the materials for the lessons that you're going to use, but if it, I know, some of those links are... Well, if she has to preview it, though, it should probably be in before the lesson. Yeah. It really should. Okay, like, I'm yeah. going to put them in background. Okay, that's great. I'm and then it, then it kind of blends in, <laughs> Ashley, with the... Does it blend in, then, with the paragraph of your yeah, background? Yeah, it looks... Personally, I think it looks a lot better in background information, Perfect. and I've been putting it in there. We just wanted to make sure that was okay. Absolutely. Okay. And that's part of your judgment and visual appeal. Cool. Thank as you. long as it's there so the teacher knows where to go. Perfect. 
I wish that they could click on it, but it's a paper yeah. product, so it's not oh, yeah. electronic. And I've tried Maybe to use some of the shorter so links, but you know, sometimes they don't work. Got it. Got it. I'm going to check one moment. I wanted to introduce you to Nancy, our new administrative assistant, and I want to see if she's still here. So talk for just a moment. So is that I only put it back in. That's the only thing that's done. And yeah. my reference is also. Awesome. So just put the title of the so video in materials, but put the Yeah, I and then when you the bigger one is uh, 14. Okay. Does it look small or big? Good friends. Um, Nancy, I'd like to introduce our EDUC 635 class. Um, these are the faces that you'll be working with uh, on paper. You and I will be working together on audits. This is Nancy Chukowski. Did I say it right? Chukowski. Close Ch enough. Close enough. Chukowski. Yeah. Nancy. She is our new administrative assistant. She is cleaning up the place. We are very excited, cracking the whip, and we are delighted. When you bring in your project, Nancy, they'll be bringing in their project. It won't look this beautiful. It will look like, well, this looks beautiful also, but it will be a paper copy on April 8th and for technical review. And I'll be here to um, uh, work with the professional editors, but you will be dropping it off and Nancy will have a specific area that you will put these in, like my box and my yep. mailbox. Yep. And she will begin to collect them. So you can either give them to her, give them to her if she's here, which she usually is, or um, she'll have a designated area with a sign that says professional projects for technical review. Nancy comes yep. to us via, tell us Nancy. <laughs> oh, let's say 35 years of banking, finance, mortgages, real estate, administration. So you know, she's cracking things. <laughs> she's cracking the yeah, whip. But computers a few years, so get everything in order. She's yeah. coming from Arizona. Oh, no. New Mexico. New, oh, one more step over. One step over. Right. Yeah. One more state, excuse yeah. me, from New Mexico. So we are yeah. delighted to have her. She's yeah. very organized. It's what we needed. We're getting and there. We're, we're getting, getting there. there. I know. But yeah. um, if you have some questions, Nancy may be able to answer them. If not, she'd be a text, a phone call, or an email. All okay. right. Nancy, thank you for stopping by. You're All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yes. When we turn them in, do you want them just with a binder clip or do you want them like in a binder? No, this is perfect. Okay. This is Meredith's, um, her last final copy. It has a clip on it. This makes it so much easier for the um, professional editors. And do you want it just printed on one side or two sided? Your choice. Okay. Your choice, but also I did mention earlier in class tonight that it does not have to be in color. Don't waste your money or white collar crime, your school printer on <laughs> printing in color. But if you want, for example, I appreciate the fact that Meredith has given, this is my copy, um, to continue looking at as I review it and we work together this next week. But um, she gave me a few pages, quite a bit, but in color so that we can kind of get the gist of it when you submit it to technical review. For your project director tonight, it doesn't need to be in color. But if you want to put a few pages in color, your choice. <sighs> okay, bad teaching tonight. It's all about me talking to you and giving you information. My apologies, but thank you so much. I put two classes into one, and so, whew, thank you, we're done, we're done. <laughs>